My name is Jason Kessler. For those who don't know me, many of you are going to be watching this at home rather than here in the park. Um, I organized last year's Unite the Right rally and I organized this year's rally. And I'm going to tell you why I did that. But first, I would like to make a few things clear. I am not doing this to disrespect the memory of people who were hurt or who died last year. My condolences are with the family of Heather Heyer and with the families of the two Virginia State Troopers who died in the helicopter accident. Uh, I thank them for their service. Second, I would like to thank the law enforcement community of the Washington DC area for protecting my free speech rights and by proxy the free speech rights of all Americans yeah, yeah. Uh, this is this has been a very uh, weird and imperfect process and I think uh, hopefully we'll do more demonstrations in the DC area in the future and learn how to work together better but uh, the main thing is uh, so far I'm not aware of anybody being hurt everybody's safe that was my number one priority uh, my second priority was to uphold free speech because I think a very dangerous precedent was set last year for a number of different reasons. Uh, I, I did not want to allow the tactics of Antifa using violence to shut down the speech of people they disagree with to work. And uh, that's one of the reasons we don't have more people. There were a lot of people um, who were at last year's rally who are very scared this year. They, they felt like last year they came to express their point of view, they were attacked, and when they fought back, they were overly prosecuted. And the Charlottesville government refused to prosecute the Antifa side of the violence. Jason, they came with... They so, came uh, the way that this is going to work weapons. is uh, I'm going to speak first a little bit. Uh, I'm going to answer some common questions that the media and the folks at home might have. Then I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the civil rights abuse that happened last year in Charlottesville and the facts that were kept from the American public. Then some other yeah. folks are going to come up and they're going to speak. They're going to speak on the topic of white civil rights and the fact that white people should be allowed to have advocates and to advocate for their civil rights just like other racial groups are able to do already in this country. Some folks are not even white. They're going to come up and speak about the benefits of tolerance and talking to one another rather than attacking each other. They're going to talk about a lot of different things, but not all my speakers were able to make it here today, unfortunately. Let me, let me just tell you guys a little bit about the day I've had, which was kind of crazy. First of all, I had people attacking me left, right, and center, and uh, we had a guy who was going to be driving a bus for us and we didn't know who that guy was evidently because we showed up and uh, he wasn't there. There were a lot of sketchy characters there. So we ended up getting to the train station a little bit early and uh, we weren't told by law enforcement previously that as soon as I arrived we had to go. So I, I apologize if people got left behind. Uh, we, we were supposed to have the train station open from uh, 2 to 3 and uh, a lot of people may have traveled from all over the country and got left behind there. Okay, so I'm going to give two speeches. The first one is about uh, the civil rights abuse that happened last year in Charlottesville. I'm going to let the other guys speak, maybe even some people who weren't even thinking about speaking. But we've had to fill in some gaps. Some of our speakers had their tires slashed uh, on the way in and got waylaid you know we had people who were going to speak uh we had a guy from south africa who was going to speak about the uh the rape and mutilation and murder of the white farmers in south africa and all these um these friends in the alt-right told this guy not to come a lot of uh these people who are uh, tough guys, uh, wannabe Nazi types said, don't go, it's going to be a shooting gallery. You're going to be hurt if you go. Well, 
All right, tough guy Nazis. Uh, I'm not a Nazi, I'm a moderate, and I'm standing here while you're in your mommy's basement. All right, so. What happened last year in Charlottesville was that I organized the Unite the Right event. The purpose of the Unite the Right event was to say that white people deserve to be able to stand up for their rights like other people are able to do. I think the tearing down of that Robert E. Lee statue was symbolic of a replacement that is going on in the United States where white people are being guilted for slavery and war and all these things that every racial group on the planet is engaged in, but they're saying tear down Robert E. Lee and tear down Thomas Jefferson. They're not saying tear down the Great Wall of China, which was built with slave labor. They're not saying tear down the Mayan and Aztec and pyramids, which were built with slave labor. It's only white people, and it's only our countries which have to be flooded with too many people to the point where the host populations don't exist anymore. I'm not a white nationalist. I've never claimed to be a white nationalist, okay? But I'm okay with sharing this country with people from around the world. But if you bring in too many people at once, it's not the same country anymore. And that's what they're doing, and that's why a lot of white people feel aggrieved. Because they feel like the country that they're waking up in in 2018 is a very, very different country than the one they woke up in 1960, 1970, 1980. And so I think, therefore, the face of white advocacy is very different than it was in the past. A lot of folks are deliberately misconstruing white identity politics today as something that's endorsing the KKK or neo-Nazis. And I think, in fact, there are a lot of people in the alt-right who are encouraging that by trying to be these cartoon Nazis and deliberately stupid and hateful. And I just gotta say, I mean, I thank the alt-right to some extent for waking me up to the fact that my people had a voice and had people who were gonna stand up for them. But I gotta say, a lot of the jokes just aren't funny anymore. Give it a rest. We gotta be honest, we gotta be sincere. Uh, there is a way forward to help white folks but we cannot be uh, associating with hate or violence or oppression. Now, with Charlottesville last year, I tried to do a demonstration for that Robert E. Lee statue. I invited a lot of people from across the alt-right, alt-light, Trump supporters, uh, American Heritage supporters. Uh, a lot of folks were scared to come and be associated with some of the more extreme speakers like uh, Richard Spencer, all right? So it ended up becoming a more extreme event than I had intended. But nevertheless, even if some people have ideas which were offensive at that rally, the vast, vast majority of people on my side were nonviolent. And I think even the other side, even though they came prepared to use violence to shut down the first Unite the Right rally, they would have been nonviolent too if law enforcement had done what it was supposed to do. What we were dealing with was a city where the vice mayor who was trying to tear down that Robert E. Lee statue was pretending to be doing it uh, in the interest of equality or uh, tolerance, but at the same time, his tweets were saying, I hate white people, I hate seeing them around town. My favorite thing about being di uh, down south is seeing the faces on little white men when they have to look up to a black man. I mean, this was a racist, anti-white bigot, and that's why he was going after our heritage. And I think a lot of people who hate white people are hiding behind this false credo of equality when they're not really for equality. They are for supremacy, they are Marxist, and right now they see the white man as being on top. But not all white people are on top. Look, I'm a white man, I'm not rich, I'm not privileged, I've had a hard time just like other people have had. I have an army of people trying to stop me from being able to speak. There was an independent review done of the Charlottesville government's con conduct last year by former federal prosecutor Tim Heafy. Tim Heafy said that the cause for the violence was the Charlottesville government. As the first fights broke out last year, 
The police chief, Al Thomas, said, let them fight. It will make it easier to declare unlawful assembly. That's why I wanted to speak to President Trump at the White House. I think that it was criminal misconduct by the Charlottesville government. They shut down that event by allowing violence. They promised eight squadrons of police officers to keep the peace. They didn't show up. They promised 200 cops in the back of the park. They didn't show up. They promised cops at the front of the park. They didn't show up. And in fact, when the violence started, they were allowing people to ride in the streets, point rifles at people in cars, attack cars, and I think that that's part of why people lost their lives last year. All right, so I'm gonna give another person an opportunity to speak right now. Who would like to speak next? You wanna, not ready, George? So uh, one of our speakers, hey, any of the other people who are scheduled to speak, you wanna come up and get your opportunity? Charles, Charles, you wanna come up here? Jason, would, uh, would the people who uh, attacked DeAndre Harris represent your rally? Were those people there for it? DeAndre Harris was a miscarriage of justice. DeAndre Harris attacked an innocent man, and that is clear. DeAndre Harris was with a group of people who, look, these were black guys who were, took, who were taken advantage of by racist liberals. Because these Antifa, what they did was they came equipped with weapons like mag lights and uh, flame, portable flamethrowers. And they gave it to these black guys so that they would attack people. That, that's what DeAndre so, so. Harris and Corey Long said when they were in court. DeAndre Harris and Corey Long were attacking people with Confederate flags. They were stealing them and lighting them on fire so with portable flamethrowers. DeAndre, DeAndre Harris, DeAndre Harris, DeAndre Harris took a mag light and hit, hit. while DeAndre Harris's friend grabbed a Confederate flag out of his hand, DeAndre Harris whacked an innocent protester across yeah. the face with the mag light. I'm not saying that the that the violence done to DeAndre was proportional, but it was clear that DeAndre started that violence and that parking garage incident would not have happened were he not a violent individual himself. And further, it shows the civil rights abuse that's happened in Charlottesville because we have something called the 14th Amendment, and the reason that they implemented the 14th Amendment was because at the time, after Reconstruction, they said, that a black man should not be hung for something that a white man would not be hung for. In Charlottesville, it's the opposite. A white man will be hung for something a black man would not be hung for. DeAndre Harris's buddy fired a flamethrower at my crowd of people. Six and people attacked the man in a parking garage. Corey Long, DeAndre Harris's friend, fired a flamethrower at a crowd of people. If I had done that, I would be in a penitentiary for the rest of my life. But he got three, disorderly conduct. He got a little slap on the wrist. And DeAndre Harris still said, get that, get that flag, get that flag. And when Corey Long grabbed the flag out of the peaceful protesters' hands, DeAndre hit him across the head. I don't condone the violence that was done to DeAndre Harris, uh, but I think that, though, he had a GoFundMe <laughs> and he did very well. Uh, off of that, he got himself some new sneakers and a rap video. So good for him. I mean, he got something out of it. He attacked yeah, one of my guys. So it's a little hard for me to have sympathy for him. 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 But look, I don't condone political violence. I disavow political violence. And I'm sorry that Mr. Harris got hurt. I'm sorry that Mr. Harris's victim got hurt. So I'm going to let my next speaker up. Charles Edward Lincoln is a civil rights activist from New Orleans where they've also been tearing down Confederate history. They've been tearing down Confederate statues. And instead of backing down and allowing history to be tarnished and smeared, Mr. Lincoln is one of the few people like myself who's fighting back. He's filing lawsuits against the city of New Orleans and the opportunistic Mayor Mitch Landrieu. So I'll allow him to talk about that. Mr. Charles Lincoln. 